Ladies and gentlemen, I'm generally not openly critical of Bungie, or Destiny in itself. I maybe take a few jabs at them here and there in some of my videos, but I cut them a lot of slack. Sometimes, maybe a little more than I should. Now let's check this out. I promised before that this was the most rewarding public event. And there we have it. We have two chests so for good. a change. And uh, check out those sweet, sweet moves. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I give them a lot of leeway. I let them run on a long leash. And that's mainly because I truly enjoy physically playing the game of Destiny and existing in the world that Bungie created. But every now and then, something like Season of the Hunt comes along. And I'm not talking about Beyond Light. Season of the Hunt itself. Now initially, I thought the gameplay loop had potential, because I was under the assumption that there was going to be something more. It was going to evolve. And now, I'm not really sure if it's going to. I mean, we're still going to continue to get our standard dialogue-based plot progression, and maybe we'll get another special mission or two sprinkled in there before everything's all said and done. But overall, I think what we got is what we're getting. And that is a five minute gameplay loop that involves going to the exact same places and fighting the exact same bosses. And to be fair, continually repeating content is destiny. So this I would have been able to forgive if they had only gotten one simple thing right. The loot. If the loot was good, if those seasonal legendary weapons that we're supposed to be chasing were interesting, this all would have been fine. But the fact of the matter is, they're not. The weapons being offered this season, they, they stink. The, these guns are bad. In my opinion, this is possibly the worst, or at least tied for the worst loot pool that we've ever seen since seasons became a thing. I mean, there's, there's just nothing here. Not a single gun that I would want to use, or even pretend to want to use, or be able to dream up a reason to use. And to put things into perspective, let's take a step back to when the seasonal model first started. Three months after the launch of Forsaken came Season of the Forge and the Black Armory. Now, was this a seamless shift to a new way of delivering content? I mean, it had its flaws for sure. I did get pretty tired of the throw the ball at the thing gameplay loop rather quickly. But with the opening of every new Forge, it felt like the season was actually progressing. And this content was challenging at first. And the thing that they absolutely nailed in this season was the loot. Kindled Orchid, even as an adaptive frame hand cannon, it was still very solid. Tatera's Gaze was a very good sniper rifle. Blast Furnace was, and probably, if it wasn't Sunset, still would be one of my favorite weapons in Destiny 2. And I mean, the Hammerhead Heavy Machine Gun. That weapon was a monster for a long time. Then we saw Season of the Drifter, and say what you will about Gambit Prime and Reckoning, but the season brought us two PvP weapons that were very lethal and very popular, in the form of Spare Rations and Gnawing Hunger. And for me, the Outlast Rapid Fire Pulse Rifle ended up being one of my go-to weapons. You could conjure your inner samurai with the just-in-case sword, or see how far away you could hit a target with a grenade from the Doomsday Grenade Launcher with the Full Court perk. That year rounded out with Season of Opulence, which brought with it a whole lot of highly farmable and highly desirable loot, including the Ostringer Hand Cannon and the beloved Sniper Rifle. The seasonal model did hit a little stumbling block with Season of the Undying that came along with Shadowkeep. It was pretty light in both the loot and content department, but the optative hand cannon could see some nice rolls, and the adorative pulse rifle wasn't too bad. In Season of Dawn came the Sundial activity, rewarding weapons like the Breach Lighter Sidearm, which has a very dedicated cult following amongst the community. We saw our very first waveform grenade launcher in the form of Martyr's Retribution, and Saint 14's personal shotgun, the Perfect Paradox, returned with random rolls. I also got the chance to lay my hands on my all time favorite auto rifle that season, Steel Feather Repeater. Now I'm going to pour a little out for that one when it gets sunset next season. With Season of the Worthy, the only weapon I really took an interest in was the CQC-12 shotgun, but the War Mind Cell mod system was introduced, which added value to every weapon in the loot pool. And then Season of Arrivals, which I'm sure is still fresh in everybody's mind. I mean, Falling Guillotine, Cold Denial, Whispering Slab, Hollowed Words, all very farmable, and they all could potentially be very strong with the right rolls. And I'm sorry about the extended history lesson there, but I felt it was necessary to really drive the point home. Let's look at what we have right now in Season of the Hunt. And anytime I assess a weapon, I always ask myself, why would I want to use it? How can I benefit from using it? And is it different than something I have already? First weapon up on the chopping block is the Blast Batu. This is an arc adaptive frame heavy grenade launcher. This can roll with some decent perks like Killing Wind, Wellspring, and Chain Reaction. Other than that, everything here is pretty much standard fare for a heavy grenade launcher. 
Killing Wind, while it is a top tier perk, is not exactly useful on this weapon. Well, Spring and Chain Reaction are nice perks, but they're more geared toward ad clearing. And is that how you're going to be spending your heavy ammo? So unless you really need an arc-flavored grenade launcher for something, I'm going to say this weapon is pretty uninteresting. Next up, the Royal Chase Precision Frame Scout Rifle. If you're looking for something new on this weapon, you get Thresh. And that's it. If you're thinking about using this as a PvP weapon, I can tell you this archetype is pretty bad. Last year, Bungie tried to throw a pinnacle precision frame scout rifle at us in the form of the Oxygen SR3, and this couldn't even entice players to want to pick it up. Royal Chase is a very underpowered and uninspired weapon. The Friction Fire Precision Frame Submachine Gun might be the only redeeming weapon in this loot pool if you're a PvP player. Now, Precision Frame Submachine Guns are the ones shooting at 600 rounds per minute, and they do not have great time to kill values when compared to other SMG archetypes but they can be used from a little further out if you can manage the recoil. And Friction Fire can roll with some nice PvP perks, like Killing Wind, Zen Moment, Vorpal Weapon, Wellspring, or Rampage, so you can potentially find some pretty respectable rolls here. But you're still going to be dealing with those slower time to kills. If you're hellbent on using this weapon in PvE, I mean, it is a legendary submachine gun and it's not Recluse 2.0 by any means, but do what you want. Then Corsair's Wrath, issue number one, it's a linear fusion rifle, and linear fusion rifles have absolutely no business taking up your heavy slot. Issue number two, any new perks? Well, yeah, we have Thresh, so enjoy wasting your power ammo on ads to take advantage of it. Lastly, we have the Deafening Whisper Void Wave Frame Special Grenade Launcher. If you liked Martyr's Retribution, now you can have a grape-flavored waveform grenade launcher to use past this season when Martyr's is sunset. We do have two new perks on Deafening Whisper in Surplus and Wellspring. And while I always have liked the concept of a waveframe grenade launcher, I feel it lacks versatility since the damage is always 100% confined to the ground. Plus, you need to accurately place your grenade in front of enemies with the correct angle of impact to make the most of it. And I personally don't find this weapon type to be the best use of my special ammo on either side of the game, so I don't use them. So what I'm looking at here in the seasonal weapon offering is five weapons that I really don't have much of a use for. And as a whole, what Season of the Hunt is presenting to me is a pretty forgettable seasonal activity built around loosely focus farming guns that I don't really want. And this brings up one other major point of contention. Should Bungie have charged $10 for the seasonal content they offered here? I'm gonna say absolutely not. Now, we've seen this once before in Season of Undying, which launched alongside Shadowkeep. We had a very bare-bones seasonal loot pool and a very bare-bones seasonal activity. And in my opinion, both of those seasons should have been rolled into the expansion for the base price. And it's not even about the $10, because, I mean, what does $10 buy you anymore these days? It's the value proposition. I mean, you shouldn't sell something like Season of Arrivals for $10, and then turn around a couple months later and sell Season of the Hunt for $10. The two just, they, they don't compare. I mean, once the precedence has been set, there is no excuse for skimping on seasonal content just because it launched alongside a major expansion. Bungie needs to maintain consistency across the board so that the player has a sense of what they're buying. And another thing that's been bugging me, I think it was pretty underhanded to sell this season on the appeal of Hawkmoon. And believe me, this did happen. I personally saw a big uptick in viewership on my Season of the Hunt quick start guide as soon as Hawkmoon dropped. This kind of made me feel like people were just outright buying Hawkmoon. And this is a road that we do not want to go down. This sends the wrong message. This lets Bungie know that they can release underdeveloped content, roll an iconic Destiny 1 weapon into the package, and people are going to open their wallets. But hey, maybe you really like Season of the Hunt, and you're totally fine with the loot, and everything's on the up and up in your book. I mean, if you are, that's great. Go enjoy the content. I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just trying to offer a little bit of perspective. And if you can appreciate that, please remember to leave this video a like, and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to see more Destiny 2 content that is definitely going to be on the more positive side in the very near future. If you'd like to catch me live, look for Ironworker814 on Twitch. If you'd like to contact me, comment down below and I will get back to you. And with all that being said, thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this video. You guys are awesome and I will catch you on the next one.